Hello everyone. Uh, in my previous videos, I mentioned and explained lots of different uh, GDNT symbols and their applications. And when I was looking at all of these, I found a few symbols that uh, maybe I did not either completely or explicitly explained in my previous videos. So I collected them and put up this video together. So hopefully the collection of my videos in terms of explaining GDNT is, I mean, not complete, but I mean, uh, relatively good and comprehensive. The first symbol is the square. And this is used when you have a profile of a square. And instead of showing both of these uh, dimensions here, you can just go ahead and show one of them. And then next to that dimension, you put the square symbol. And that means it's a square profile. So if I want to show you that in SOLIDWORKS here, I made this part. And I want to put dimensions on this square. Instead of doing it here, I can go ahead and add it over there right so here look i put this dimension right there and then i come down to the dimension text and right before that i add my square symbol and that's it done so i don't need to provide both of those dimensions in this view okay let's go for the next three symbols which are about counter sink counterboard and a spot face so we use a countersink and a counterboard to uh, have room, a recess surface for the top of a bolt or screw to be flush with the surface they are uh, inserted in, right? So a counterboard, as you know, it's a, a cylindrical, it's for a cylindrical head, it's a recess. And a countersink or countersink is basically a truncated cone. And the symbols for them is this one for countersink, this one for counterboard, if we have those for a, a, a machined hole. And there is a shallow version of counterboard, which is called the spot face, and we show it with the same symbol as counterboard, but with a S and F extra. And the difference between that and a counterboard is the shallowness. And why do we do it shallow? Because all we need here is to find a flat surface for the bolt to sit in and we don't necessarily want the bolt that goes in the head of it to be flush like in this case it's going to be flush in this case the bolt might not be flush might just be sticking out like that so why do we do it because this top surface of the object is not necessarily what it's not necessarily a flat surface and might not be very good for the bottom of the head of the bolt or screw to sit at so instead of that right because we don't want to polish that entire surface we just care about this place that the bolt or screw is inserted so here we just create this flat surface only and uh we call it a spot face so if you want to add these in solidworks let me show you so here i have a counterboard and a countersink holes if you use the uh, whole callout command, it does recognize them and add those symbols automatically. Look here. You see, the counterboard symbol is added. If I do it for countersink, you see, the countersink symbol is added. So now, if that was a shallow uh, uh, counterboard, it was a spot face, then you can come here and you can modify this. So you see down here, you see it says the whole spot, this, uh, this line here. If I get rid of that whole spot, look that counterboard symbol goes away. Now I want to add a what? I want to add a spot face. So I click on these symbols and boom, there we go. It's added, okay? And um, if it's not there, I, it was there because I used it already, but if it's not there, you go to what? You go to more symbols. And if you go under whole symbols, you should be able to what? You should be able to find the spot face. Okay, so this is about that. The next two that we have on, uh, we have seen relative to them something are radius and diameter, as you know. But if you put the letter S behind them, that means they are spherical radius and spherical diameter. So if you have a spherical object or surface, if you want to show the diameter of it, you say S phi and the number, or you say S radius and the number. And again, that means what? These are spherical uh, surfaces, not cylindrical. 
So S, R, and S, phi are just for spherical ones. So here I have this spherical head here. And if I want to show the size of this guy here, look here, I click on this surface and bring it out. And it shows the radius of that. And it should be radius in this case because it's not a full circle. A part of it is truncated here. But you see, it's just S. It's not SR. So I can go ahead and what? Add this extra S here. And that's all I need to do. So here we go. S, R, 0.48. Done. Okay. And I can do a similar thing for a diameter. The next thing we need to talk about is dimension origin, which is basically a dimension and a circle at it. And uh, you can see that probably here too, if you look, right? If you look here, you can see that, right? So you use something like this instead of this double arrow, double uh, arrowhead. And uh, what's the use of that? What's the point of that? Well, it, we use it in GDNT to indicate where, uh, from where, with respect to where, a dimension must be measured, okay? And we cannot do measurements with any other way. For instance, if you look at this kind of jagged uh, sheet metal, right? Here, I want to measure the height of this surface with respect to... This guy here, so I have to make sure I put this down on the inspection table, and then I measure this height. I cannot fill up the part. I cannot fill up the part and put this small surface on the table and then measure the height of what? This guy from it. If I fill up that and do it, that is wrong. So this one is telling me, hey, measure it that way. Okay, so it's kind of like what, like when we had a datum here, right? And we know that we have to put that datum on and then measure with respect to datum. Instead of using that, we can use this origin of the dimension, dimension origin. Okay, the next thing we have is this symbol for parting line. And whenever you see that, means the part is probably made by casting, molded, or forged. So there are two uh, parts involved in making this component, right? Two pieces of the mold or uh, two pieces of the uh, cast or forge or anything. And wherever those two pieces are separated, there is this parting line between them. You see that a lot in plastic parts made by injection molding, right? And if you want to show where that line should be, you can refer to that line here and use this phantom line extended and then use what this kind of diamond and that extra line and that means you have a parting line over there okay the next two symbols are slope and a conical taper both of them are to show slope really this is the slope this is the conical taper but for the second one you're indicating that the surface is a basically a part of a cone Okay, and in both cases, whether it's a flat surface like that or a conical surface like that, you, you show a ratio inside a box, and this ratio is the ratio of delta y to what? To delta x, or uh, basically the uh, drop in the vertical direction to the uh, amount of distance uh, traveled along the x direction. The next one is called statistical tolerance. If you see the symbol ST, that means the tolerance zone is determined using statistics, using statistical principles and data instead of calculating using the formulas in GDNT. For instance, if you watch one of my previous video, I told you that if you have a hole and if you have a pen, right, and uh, you want to find the amount of this uh, position tolerance zone, right? You subtract the MMC of the hole and subtract it from the MMC of the shaft, let's say if it's a clearance hole, and that difference between them is the number that is going to sit here, right? So you, there are formulas for calculating some of the size of the tolerance zones, but not always. Many times, really, 
uh, the manufacturers decide on these um, tolerance zone, these values here, based on their statistics, based on the principles and data they uh, get from statistics uh, from their manufactured uh, parts. And uh, one of the assumptions they make is that uh, the variations in each feature in the part follows a normal distribution and also the variation in different features are independent from each other, okay? So for instance, if they make this part over and over and over, right? And then if they come and measure, let's say, this 0.6 diameter, and they look at the distribution of the values they found for this 0.6, right? So if we call this uh, some measurement one, right? If they plot this measurement one versus frequency or the number of times that they did the measurement, then they assume that, for instance, it follows a normal distribution, something like this, and maybe this average is 0.6 or something similar to 0.6, very close to 0.6, with some standard deviation, okay? And then uh, the distribution of this and how this one changes is independent from how this one is changing, okay? So the average and the standard deviation of this uh, normal distribution for 0.6, they are different and independent from what? The one for 0.75. Now, this statistical uh, tolerance is a topic of its own, okay? It can it definitely take uh, way more than a lecture just to go over that, how to determine those, but that's not the topic I want to talk about right now. I just want to tell you, if you see that ST next to a tolerance zone, that means that tolerance zone, the value for it is determined by statistical principles and data and not through what the common formulas we have in GDNT. So let's say here I want to put the position tolerance for the center of this uh, countersink hole, right? So I added this uh, feature control frame to this dimension and I have added the position symbol and the value. Now I want to say that, hey, that value 0.01 or 10,000, that is coming from statistics. So I go here and I go to symbol and then I add what? This statistical symbol. And of course, you have to add uh, datums and so on, right? But that is basically uh, what? That is basically adding that ST so they know how you got that. Okay, the last one I want to talk about is called a datum translation. It's like a, a play button, basically, right, in uh, video recorders or something. And that means when you are inspecting a part, that specifically this part has parallel holes, and uh, these parallel holes can or could be used as datums, like in this case you can see, right? So in here, uh, if you can see, one of them, A, is this hole here, and then B is the other one. So two parallel holes are used as datums. And when I want to create basically a, a datum simulator, right, which has a, backing, a back part and two pins, uh, if you look here on this uh, top uh, scenario, uh, when I put the part onto the datum simulator, I put the holes onto these uh, pins. Uh, I, when I made this datum simulator with these two red pins, I tried to make sure that the distance between the two centers of these pins is exactly this 100 value and it's fixed, okay? So these datums cannot move with respect to each other. Their axis stays what parallel and at a fixed distance. And I put the part on it and see if these pins uh, go through the holes, they clear them or not, and then I decide to accept it or reject it, okay? And as you can see here, depending on the uh, size that this hole is made, this uh, right side hole is made, and based on its position tolerance, you might or might not get what the hole to be kind of concentric with the pin or not. As you can see, in this case, it's not. And the pin is barely touching the left side of the hole, right? 
it might just contact it only in one or a few points and in this case maybe this part cannot hold its orientation perfectly well right because it barely has much of a contact here so in order to allow for this um, feature simulator to make a more basically stable datum reference frame we might allow this datum simulator b the second pin on the right to be able to slide a little bit and move away from datum a so their distance basically can change from 100 and move a little bit right this way, I'm allowing basically now the pin to come in contact with the hole at a lot more points and kind of keep it in place. So that's where I come to this datum B and next to this datum B, I add this small triangle, as you can see, that indicates to the inspector that, hey, if you want, you can make this second pin to be a little bit movable and it doesn't need to be made at perfectly 100 fixed number okay so that is called a, a datum translation and this is a modifier for a datum like the mmc that we had next to the datums and i mentioned that in one of my previous videos uh, maximum boundary basically right maximum material boundary this translation is also a modifier for a datum, not a modifier for what? For a value of a tolerance zone. And if you want to do it in SOLIDWORKS, all you need is double click here in the datum area for the uh, feature control frame. And let's say here I want to be, a, B to be able to move. So you click at B and then you add what? You add the translation here, right? Right, and you see here it is doing that. Now it's typically done when you have two of them, not three of them, right? As I said, so like two parallel holes, then you can get it done like this. So A here is fixed, but B maybe what moves. Now in this case, of course, I did not show you A or B and we don't have parallel holes, but in general, just wanted to show you how to do it in SOLIDWORKS. So hopefully this new collection of uh, symbols for GDNT was useful to you and now with all the videos that I published you have a relatively good grasp of what it means when you see any of these symbols and how to use them. Thank you so much for your attention and I'll see you in my future videos.